In this video, I will show you how I created this amazing fight animation with the fireballs together with my girlfriend that I showed you yesterday using this cool effect pack from Superhero Pack from Big Films. Here in DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. In order to make this work on the iPad in DaVinci Resolve, what I'm using today is a superheroes pack from Big Film. So this is an animation pack where you can create Marvel-like animations inside of any cutting program. So it's not just DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, but the cool part is it is working on DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. So you can create amazing videos just using your iPad. And I show you now today how I did all of this. So before we start, I will just show you what I created in my project. So this is the project and just ignore the black one right now because the black one will be the one that we start fresh together but I created three different timelines. I start everything in the raw timeline. In the raw timeline I bring in my footage and I make adjustments, I make adjustments with the color page and everything and also I create here all of the animations that you can see here in the timeline and it's basically this is the footage making some adjustments there and then what you see here this is the animations put together with some softness and everything but we will we'll go over that one. After I created the look and the settings and everything then I render it out and I tested a couple of different ones because sometimes with animations it's better if you render it out and then when you have the rendered versions, I created like version one, two, three, four, then you can see which one looked the best. And after I've decided which of those animations actually looked the best, I bring in my animations again and now I have a sound effects uh, animation timeline. In this one, I did two things. I created the sound effects because before there was no sound effects in. And also because to make this a little bit more realistic, I created camera shake for the footage that is already rendered. So in here, I create this camera shaking when the balls and everything is uh, flying around. This just gives you a little bit more realism. And then I created the timeline is the final animation because the final video also has some music in the background. And I use this one just if there would be something was going wrong or whatever. In that case, I just put the music on top of that one. Okay, let's restart everything. We have our fresh timeline. I have an iPhone footage that I bring now into my timeline. You see now here, I still placed this one. I forgot even to bring in a, a tripod. It's just sitting on the ground on my backpack. You see also that it's tilted. It's not perfectly aligned. And also we have some color issues here because it's shot in a higher profile, the HDR profile from the iPhone. So we have to correct that one as well. So what we do now is I go to the point what I need. It's probably around here. So the beginning I delete and here I'm out. So to in order to make everything straight, I use now the following. I go to effects and I look for the effect grid. Now I can place the grid on top here. And now you have those different lines in your footage. Now I open this one in the inspector and I can number one, zoom in a little bit more, change the rotation. If the rotation is a little bit too fast, if you use this slider here, what you can do, let's return this one. You can also, just slide here on the numbers. Then it's, oops, then it's also a little bit more soft. So I do this, so the horizon is like that. And because I zoom in, I can also bring in the position more to the middle and also getting a little bit more um, the rule of thirds. So that means I take my horizon line to that line here just a little bit. I keep it a little bit above. That looks pretty good to me. Now what you can do, you can either just Turn it off the grid if you want to use it later or just delete this one. The first step I did because I wanted to see the colorize, but you don't have to do this. You could create the animation first and then color it later. But in my case, I did the following. I went to the color page and I created a second node with um, option S and I go here into the settings. The second menu has the color space transform. I put this on top because it's an iPhone footage. I can go now in here and I change this to rec 2020 and in input gamma it's rec 2100 HLG. And I also have to change here the gamma output method and I put this to saturation composition. So it's almost good, but it's not perfect. So I create a second node. And in this second node, what I do is I boost a little bit more the contrast. I go up with the saturation a bit. And sometimes the shadows are too dark but in that one image it's actually okay so it's fine i just increased the shadows a little bit so the next note is for stylizing it i make it very simple now for this and i make it like an orange and teal looking um, image because we have the sky we have this one and on the ground if you want to make this even more perfect you could like uh, give your actors different clothing. So it would be even better if we have like two colors, but yeah, we did this randomly. So I use the color warper and I take this point here, bring it down here 
take this point here so it becomes more teal maybe a little bit too much teal it's up to your preference how you want to do this let's do it like this and the green can become like that and if you take this one here on the top more in there becomes more orange so maybe not enough orange here for the floor so what you can do i create another node where i will change the orange color so i go here to the curves and i go to hue versus saturation and now i can click here in the image to the sand and now i have those points isolated so i can increase the saturation just for the orange one so i bring this up here so it's a little bit more orange and teal look that's good enough for now because i just want to make the animation right if for whatever reason your ipad is not fast enough and you now want to create those animations you can always toggle off your color grading here then you don't see the color grading and it's a little bit more um it's less uh, processor intensive but on my iPad it actually works pretty fine so now I show you what I actually did so I have the following problem when I look here into my animation I, I shoot my fireball and she is pairing it too late so this was my first issue that I had I have to create a second layer so what I did what I do now is I unlink those clips and I go down here link and now I can select this clip and just make a copy with option and put this up so just turn this one off for a moment. So I go into this clip here in the inspector and I go down to cropping. And now I can crop from the right because I don't need in this clip uh, what I'm doing on the right side. I just need Susie and I have to change the position now from her because she is basically maybe a little bit too fast. So this now depends on the animation. So now let's go into the animation pack superhero and we have for example here I think it was energy or blast there's way more I just uh, included a couple of those folders but the animations look like this so I have this one here for example yeah, that's the one just that you see they have different ones I could even shoot a couple of those right Do -do 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 -do. so I used that one so I drag and drop this now onto my timeline so and I what you can do is like I need this on this position ha so I bring this in here. So now you see the fireball comes from the left to the right. How can you fix this? It should be from the right to the left, very simple. You open the inspector and in the inspector here under transform, you can flip. So I flip this now here and let's zoom in here a little bit more. On that position is my hand here. So I want that the fireball is actually starting from here. So I can now select the fireball. And if you don't see this one here, you can activate this. And now you can actually take it and start doing this one here so let's see how it looks nice so this fireball now of course is just flying through Zuzi we will fix this in a second but first we have to she's pairing too late do you see that she's still pairing too late so what we do now is we take this clip and drag it a little bit more left still more ah this is almost this is almost perfect so I maybe just make it one more notch yeah, so this is perfect. So now she's pairing the, the fireball. And what we want to do is, of course, the fireball shouldn't keep moving there. To make more realism, I will now create a second fireball that is coming from her. But this fireball, we use a crop for that. So we go down here and look at crop again. Cropping from the left. So we can crop this in. Oh, no, cropping from the right because we swipped it. So you have to crop from the right. So And we can crop this around here and now you have this hard edge if you look closely you see this that the rest of that is like this um, smog fog whatever it will look too harsh we could cover this with the second fireball and then maybe you don't notice that's basically what i did with my original footage it was more harder on the second uh, fireball that i did but now let's do what you can do is go in here and the smoothness the softness here you can play with the softness and just make the softness a little bit more. Let's do it like this. So, okay, she's pairing it. Now what we have to do, let's look for the second fireball. And there is a fireball that comes from, yeah, that's exactly one. So there's a fireball that shoots to us, to the camera. So I thought this is a perfect match. So I can bring this up here and exactly where she's pairing it, bring this one to her and what I also did so that it's going out of the screen I made it bigger and I have to readjust position again so it's of course from here maybe a second too late so we take this fireball 
and put it in here. So you can see now, even with my M1, it's lagging a little bit. So if you want to be 100% clear, what I would do is now continue with the animation after you have done your animation, then render it out and look at it in real time. And if you see or spot some problems, you can still move it around. Maybe it's a little bit too too far on the on the left side. I would maybe bring this in a little bit more like this. Yeah, that looks good. So we have the first animation, boom, boom. And basically this is the same what I now did with the second animation. So for the second we used fire. So there's a couple of different fire animations that we have here inside. Now I have to find the one that I was using. That's the one. So now we take this one and bring this into the timeline. And same thing again, take this position here, here. Okay, nice. We have to now look where it's hitting on me. It's probably around here. I go in here into the inspector and I will crop it from the right. So it's not moving more than to me, something around here. I will also play around with the softness like this. And to make it more realistic, we do now two things. Number one, I created a smoke. I think I used that one here because it starts with an explosion and then we have this smoke here. So I use this one, I put this now here on top and on the position when it's hitting me, I think around here. Now it's sideways, I want that it's 90 degrees off. So I go in here on that clip and I go to transform and I type in, I think minus 90. No, opposite, I want just 90 this way. So and we have to bring this in. Also with that one, I play a little bit with the opacity so it's not as strong. Just a little bit, 86%. If you use the arrow keys right and left, you can go frame by frame. And you see now the smoke is a little bit too large. So we make this now smaller, place it exactly here when it's hitting me. And that way we also covering the impact. So one more thing to make it more realistic, we choose now this fireball coming back to us, to the viewer. And we do exactly the same like we already did with on Susie's side after it's hitting make this one bigger as well, using the arrow keys to make the exact position. Now it's still too low. So the screen is not big enough at the moment. So I go in and I increase the screen a bit more. I have to check the beginning again, just a little bit. Okay, so, and this is basically the process how you can do this. So what I did to make this more realistic after I render everything, let, let this render. And after that, I create the shaking, create the sound effects, create the music to make it more realistic. Definitely use sound effects to make your animation more realistic. And definitely if you put in a little bit more music and shaking, then it will not look as amateur. Sometimes special effects and animation is all about speed. So the viewer, only if he repeats and look at it slowly, maybe sometimes notice that, oh, it's not realistic. But most of the times you can come away looking very good with at least amount of time. And this is also why I'm showing you this tutorial today, not to show you how you can create a fireball because that can take way longer, but how fast you can achieve a very good looking end result with minimal time spent even on an iPad. So let's look into this one here, files. That looks good, and now hers. That looks good too. So very, very realistic, very cool. So, and that's it from me today. I think this is one of the best packs that you can get. All the masterclass students from DaVinci Resolve that we have, I have a deal for you. That's 15% off of all of those packs. They don't have just um, the superhero one. They have so many more. There was a comment yesterday. Do they have like a horror pack? And I think they even have different versions, dragons. You have to look into it. They will make more in the future as well. But this is one thing that every filmmaker should have in this tool belt. And I think I'm so excited that we can now create those kind of videos just using iPad. Imagine Imagine you're sitting somewhere in a train to somewhere and you create this funny uh, animation. Very cool. I hope you liked this video and you learned something. If yes, hit like, subscribe, ding a ding in the bam bang gong and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.